This is Christoph von Thoma from Pronofix and in this um, videocast I'm going to demonstrate how you can integrate uh, PubMed through RSS feeds into Drupal. Um, very short word about PubMed. Um, PubMed is a, a free search engine um, that pulls its uh, data from the Medline database um, that was uh, that is provided by the United States National Library of Medicine and it basically allows you to pull down um, any kind of articles and abstracts uh, f from medical research and related biotechnological and, and all, all kinds of other um, research that are related to the medical field. Um, it's a part of the entry information retrieval system and uh, what's pretty interesting is that from 2007 um, there the NIH requires um, publishers um, or, or researchers that have been funded by the NIH uh, to include their uh, articles into the PubMed database. Um, but um, let's get started. So this is um, a Drupal 5 installation. Um, you could do this also in Drupal 6, but um, yeah, for no specific reason, I, I implemented this demo into Drupal 5. And um, um, what we'll try to do is to get here in this area on the front page uh, a block that shows the five most recent articles for a famous um, blogger who is also a scientist. Um, but first, let's get uh, let's go to PubMed's uh, website. So if you, if you go to the homepage of PubMed, um, you've got this search box here. Um, now, if, if you know the syntax of PubMed, you can easily submit queries here. But if, if you don't know the syntax so well, then you can also use advanced search. Um, I'll just show that. Um, to formulate specific queries. Um, now, we're going to keep it quite simple. And I'm going to look for articles from Myers PZ. Um, he's the author of um, a big um, science blog, uh, but he's also um, a biological uh, researcher, biology researcher in neuroscience. So when you do search, um, this PubMed will give you a list of articles. Um, in this case, it's 10. Um, and then you can choose like how, how you would like to work with them. Now, what we're interested in is this feature here, the RSS feed, that allows you to create an RSS feed for, for, your, for your queries. Um, we're going to put this on the maximum, and we're going to create a feed. And then we're going to copy, uh, copy, link location. We're going to copy the link and we're going to use that for, for our site. Now, um, as you can see, this is quite labor intensive because for every single query you have to go and submit um, the search and create the RSS feed. Um, we are working in the company, um, or we are working together with the uh, with the thesis students from Seget on a module that would do these things uh, automatically, uh, so that you wouldn't have to create ex uh, RSS feeds, but that it could um, use the PubMed uh, API uh, to pull down articles directly. Um, now, you we will um, we have created this feed node. Um, with the title, like the the author, um, and then this is the important bit where we're going to paste the feed. We're going to save, submit it, and then once it's submitted, um, uh, you'll see that um, we get here this refresh link. Now, if we're going to go refresh, then it's going to go and pull down all the articles uh, for this specific feed. Um, then items were saved. Now, if we look back at the front page, then we see that those articles have been added. Voila. So now, how how does this work practically? Like, um, because this is um, this is more like how you could use this. Um, 
if you look, um, if, if you go and install the feed API and uh, feed element mapper, um, once you install the feed API, you're going to receive, uh, you're going to get in your content types uh, feed content type. If you, um, the other content type that's important here is the article content type. Uh, that's one that that I created myself. Uh, it's CCK and it contains um, the fields to which I'm going to map the fields from the feed. So if you look in the feed, um, the only things that's, that are interesting or that are a bit more tricky here are um, so, so you should indicate that it's a feed content type um, and this this is a bit more tricky is is the parser to use. Um, I tried out both SimplePy and the common syndication parser, and um, for me, it it seems that the uh, common syndication parser is a little bit cleaner in this case um, because apparently the, the the RSS feed from from PubMed is formatted in such a way that it's not not all that yeah it's it's not all that useful. Um, for um, the specific um, for, for, for importing into feed API. So once you've set those settings, like enabled the common syndication parser, which is core for feed API, um, you saved it. You can say here what type of node that you're going to be ref um, you, your feeds will be saved as and I've chosen here the article node type um, uh, content type and this is the article content type and um, you can see here in the fields that I've added an abstract field which is just a text field uh, an author's field also text full text text journal which is also text and an original URL, uh, which is a link. And all, all of these uh, we're going to try to map using the feed element mapper um, to the appropriate uh, CCK fields, so from the RSS feed. Now, how does that work? Um, when you go into the... Um, once you've created this feed, you remember we created earlier this Myers PZ feed? Um, you also have here the map tab and when you click on the map tab you get um, something like this where you have the feed example where you can see like how how what what kind of information is provided uh, in the RSS feed and then these are the available um, areas in your content type in your in your node um, that you could put information into and then here you have um, uh, a bunch of uh, select lists uh, that allow you to say, okay, the title um, from the feed should be mapped to the field full title um, in the content type. Description to the abstract, um, the original author to the authors, the original URL to URL, I, I guess you get the picture. And then when you update that, um, it, it will go and save the appropriate information in the appropriate place. Um, then to, to get to get a view on the front page, I've got here this um, this is actually already different from, from what we had first. I've got here a text full title and original URL. Why is it important to use the, the CCK? Um, a CCK field for the full title. Um, sometimes the title of an article will be longer than the allowed length of a note in uh, Drupal, and, and then uh, this field comes comes in handy to um, to allow you to have a short uh, to also capture the longer titles and show those in your views. So, and if you save this, oops, oops. Um, if you save this this view. Um, then you'll see, oh, let's come back to the front page, that we now have the full title with the URL to the article, and which is also working. Um, I can show you. Voila. So, and, and that's how you use um, 
feed API, feed element mapper um, to integrate um, PubMed articles into your Drupal site.